What up, y'all? UFC T dot breakdowns. It's UFC Fight Night Blaze versus Aspinall in London. Uh, you know the UK fans turn up, and the UFC does a good job of packing the card full of um, UK fighters. And it definitely was. Almost every fight had a UK fighter of some sort in it, or someone who claims the UK, or someone who trained in the UK. Of course, Molly and Patty and Tom Aspinall, Nathaniel Wood was on the card. Um, Mark DeCasey was on the DeCasey was on the card. Um, Bisping in the commentary booth. Um, Nicholas Dalby. Like, it was a lot of people from the UK um, on this card. And, I mean, it was a good card, to be quite honest with you. It was one of the better ones we've had in a while. And to be crazy, what's crazy about it is Meatball and Patty could have been co-main and main event of this. But, you know, just saying. Um, so, uh, first up, we had Bulk and Olsamir versus Paul Craig, which is crazy. It's a crazy fight when you think about it. Because Paul Craig has been running through people, intimidating the shit out of them. I don't think Vulcan was scared. And that was the first problem for Craig, because Volk and Ostamir, you know, he's been in there with some real scary competitors, so the intimidation and stuff that Paul Craig normally does to his opponents, I just don't think it worked on Ostamir. And once they got in there, I think Ostamir hit Paul Craig a couple times, and Craig was like, normally I just eat punches until I can submit you, but if I eat these punches, I'm going out. So I'm going to uh, try to just fall and let you fall into my guard so I can submit you from the bottom because that's my strongest position. And Ostermere was kind of like, nah, I'll just wait for you to get up and punch the shit out of you. And so, like Paul Craig, I, he looks like he wants to murder his opponents at every fight, man. And he's strong. Like he's like, the, the way he's strong, like the way that T-City shoulder popped out, that's how Paul Craig's submissions be like. Like he don't even be doing a submission. He just be holding his opponent and it looks like his arm's gonna snap. Like, <laughs> This dude's strong. You can just see when he grabs his opponent how strong he is. Same like uh, Paul Craig very quickly learned that he just wanted to grapple. He did not want to strike with uh, Ostamir. I mean, he started going for the takedown very early, but his takedowns weren't even really take Like He's not driving through as much as he's just trying to get on you and fall to the ground with you. Uh, Ostamir's defense was so good that Craig just couldn't submit him. I mean, what's crazy is Craig looks good on his feet when he's actually striking. I just think he, he knew that Ostamir was hitting him a little harder than he wanted to be hit. One of the comments commented that Paul Craig is nuts in the best possible way. Bisping, I believe. Craig's favorite position is on his back, but Vulcan didn't want to play that game. Just observing this fight, either Vulcan Ostermere is as good as he's ever been. Paul Craig wasn't his normal self. Maybe he had an injury, maybe something in training, I don't know, bad weight cut. But he didn't look himself, that's for sure. And I'm not sure if Vulcan did it to him or if he did it to himself. I just know that this is the first fight I've seen Paul Craig not look like a destroyer. He looked like a man fighting another man who was better at him than f at fighting. For the first time, though. I remember seeing Paul Craig lose and feeling like he's still way scarier than his opponent. They were getting a little chippy, too, man. It was a point where, like, Paul Craig wants to go to the ground and Ostermere didn't. So Paul Craig fell to the ground and Ostermere was kind of trying to go in and punch him. And Paul Craig did this, like, thing where it looked like he was going to try to go for a submission. He just up kicked him. It was this real sneaky little up kick. And Ostermere did not like that. So the next time Craig fell to the ground and Ostermere, Ostermere was letting him back up, as he started to get up, Ostermere just punched him in the face. And Craig was like, what the fuck was that? And he was like, what the fuck is it? <laughs> Which is, I don't know, I just liked that moment because it was like, bitch, you kicked me in the face after pretending like he was taking me down. He's like, bitch, you punched me after pretending I was getting up. It is what it is. It's a fight, gentlemen. Ostermere won by unanimous decision. I, that was the right decision. Paul Craig did not look his normal world into herself. Next up, we had Hannah Goldie versus Molly McCann, Meatball Molly. The crowd went bananas for her. She got walked out by Dave Portnoy wearing a freaking top hat and a suit. <laughs> and a monocle and, a, and he had a bow tie that was like the British flag. Meatball uh, claimed that this fight was the meatball versus the muscles from Brussels because uh, Hannah Goldie is in great shape. First of all, I feel bad for anybody who has to fight Molly or Patty in the UK. Like the crowd goes Conor McGregor and Ireland crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like they really get behind those two. Hannah Goldie is ripped. Like, she is just in great shape physically. Like, she looks like a superhero would look. Her body, yeah, her face, she's, she's pretty too. She looks like a superhero would look. Like, if you were going to put someone in a superhero costume, it'd be Hannah Goldie, right? And then Meatball looks like her nickname should be Meatball. But Meatball Molly don't play in that ring. She's tough as nails. She hits hard. She almost had a second spinning elbow knockout in a row 
right? And then she said the best thing is like, dude, have you ever seen lightning strike twice? Well, now you have. How about that? Like, it's funny, man. She's great on the mic. They were, they were standing up striking. Hannah's going for the takedown. Um, she ends up on the ground. Molly lets her up and then just put her back down. Like, the crowd drowned out the commentators. Molly ran out the ring and jumped right in the day, putting her arms. <laughs> She's taking shots. She's drinking whiskey with Amanda Nudez, I believe. She gets up and there's like a striking back and forth. And at some point, Molly lands a spinning elbow, boom, which almost puts Hannah down. And then just turns around and just left rights Hannah until that's it. I mean, just boom, 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 boom. Oh, that meatball Molly McCann is fun to watch, man. She's fun. So, she, so her fight's over, right? She starts a chant like F some, I think the club that beat her football team. I don't know. She starts some chant F someone. Everyone joins in. And at some point they show Michael Chandler. And this kind of offended me. Not really, but just a little bit. They show Michael Chandler. And right behind Michael Chandler was Michael Venom Page. They didn't even mention him. They were mentioned basketball players. Krista Persingas is here. Some rookie from the Spurs or something. Or the Suns or something you never heard of. And Michael Venom Page was standing in the camera shot and they didn't even say his name. I don't like that UFC. You know you wish Michael Venom Page was in your in, in your thing. You don't know who Michael Venom Page is. I can't believe you're watching my video. Like just go look at his videos. It's, don't look at his knockout, look at all his other videos. And Nikita Krylov versus Alexander Gustafsson. We all know Gustafson is the guy who, I, I mean, I like to call him Viking John Jones, to be honest with you. He reminds me of John Jones a lot in the way that he fights and executes in the ring. I mean, he's much more of a karate stance and lighter on his feet than John Jones and probably uh, a lot less of a, a grappling heavy attack. But I remember those fights that he and John Jones had, and it was literally Rocky Apollo Creed type fights. Um, it was mirror match. You know what I'm saying? But the shadow won. <laughs> Anyways, Gustafson has been away from the ring for like two years. So this is his first fight since 2020. And this dude, Nikita Krylov, has beat. He has, he has fought like every big fighter. He has beat every big fighter. But he's fought every big fighter. He beat some of the good ones too. Like I, I got a list here. This dude beat Walt Harris. He beat Johnny Walker. He beat o Ovin St. Pru. And then he's fought like so many other fighters like ranked fighters like this guy is this guy is for real for real and i mean we all know gustafson is a legend and so the bell rings and nikita is just on gustafson until it's over like he never stops he's just on him just mauls him round one ko i mean called out vulcan ostomir <laughs> i think that'd be a great fight because vulcan is not gonna let him do that but also is he going to have an answer? I, I think that's a great fight, Volkan Ostermeyer versus Nikita Krylov. So next up, we had uh, Patty, Patty Pimblett versus Jordan Levitt. This fight has had all kinds of media attention. It's probably the most the most media attention of any fight on this card. Um, Patty and Jordan have been kind of going at it. Patty is quite the character. Jordan is also the character. He um, does splits and twerks in the ring after winning. He always looks like, I don't know how I won. That's how he, he always just has like a smile. Even during his fight with Patty, he looked like, I don't know how I'm going to win. <laughs> Anyways, um, it was crazy. Like, um, he came out when he first, when he's walking out, they're booing him immediately. I mean, more boos than anyone else got. Um, but he kind of ate it up like a true villain. I, I like the way he handled it. Um, the crowd was chanting, oh, Patty the Patty, before he even came out. They were already cheering that. Jordan's music was still playing, and they was chanting, oh, Patty the Patty. Um, <laughs> Patty walked out. His walk out, he was just like, ah, literally. He was having a good time, though. There were phone flashlights out. They're chanting Patty the Batty. Like, I'm telling you, that shit could have been the main event. You get me, Ball Molly. I, if, I'm the, if I'm the UFC, I'm booking another UK show that has me, Ball Molly McCann. It not have to necessarily be London, just UK, somewhere where the people from London can get there easily. Um, so they can come support them. I would have Meatball Molly McCann as the um, co-main event and Patty Pimblin as the main event. That's what I would do. But I don't book the UFC. Oh, Patty had Jordan in his head and arm choke. It's a standing head and arm choke and landed this fucking knee. I mean, like, see, I'm really in the bathroom. That was the toilet. Like, I don't even know what it's doing. <laughs> and I mean, that knee. It was a thudding, like the whole arena felt it. You felt it through the teeth. <laughs> like it was, a, it was a real powerful knee. It didn't drop Jordan, but it definitely like messed him up. It messed him up real bad. 
when they got down to the ground, Patty ended up popping on his back, and he had he got the body triangle with Jordan's right arm pinned in the body triangle. So now you have now you have one arm pinned. He's on your back with a body triangle. I mean, it was over. There was I mean, there was very little Jordan could do. Um, next thing you know, Patty's got him in the freaking rear naked choke. Jordan's got a tap. Patty gets up, tea bags Jordan. What's funny about it though is when he did it at first, Jordan's like, "Hey man, what?" the Ah, oh, you got me. Like, I love that even freaking Jordan Levitt had to laugh at that shit. Because all that shit they was talking before before the fight. So, it just was, it was it was apropos that even Jordan laughed in that moment. And, you know, I like that they, even though they talked all that shit and acted kind of crazy before the fight, they showed each other respect after it was over. They were the show stealers. I'm going to come back to that after I get through uh, the rest of the card. We had Jack Hermanson versus Chris Curtis. Chris Curtis was replacing Darren Till. Imagine... Meatball Molly, Patty, Darren Teal, then Tom Aspinall in London. UFC knows how to make a card entertaining to the people going to watch it. That's for sure. Darren Teal had to pull out, which I'm really upset. I really want to see what Darren Teal's going to do since he's been doing all that training with Kazmat. Kazmat Chmayev. He's going to smish. What you guys, what you guys think about him and Nate Diaz? I think if Nate beats him and quits the UFC. It's the most just sunglasses joint GTA music moment ever, right? Jack Hermansis versus uh, Chris Curtis. So Chris Curtis came out to Sweet Caroline, like, and it's because Darren Till wasn't there, which I think really um, kind of en endeared him to the crowd a little bit. Uh, Michael Bisping did not like it. He said, the cheek of this man. <laughs> Curtis never really got anything going until the very end of round three. I mean, and it wasn't enough. I mean, he chased Jack, and Jack just lit him up from range. And to be quite under, I have it in my notes somewhere. Jack is eat Curtis. And, of course, the crowd was mad, and Curtis was mad, too. Stop keeping me a distance and picking me apart. Stand here and let me knock you out. And Jack was like, no, I'm going to win. And the crowd was mad. Why are you winning instead of letting him knock you out? <laughs> it's like, I just don't get it. I don't understand the thought process. Like, what? don't watch the UFC if you're going to be upset because one guy is superior to the other guy in a way that makes the other guy stand still in the middle of the ring. This dude literally did a UL, uh, UL Romero's uh, uh, impersonation in the center of the ring at some point because Jack Hermanson uh, wasn't, wouldn't come in there and brawl with him. Um, and at the very end, he finally did brawl a little bit. And Chris Curtis finally had some success, but it was too late. At some point, Chris Curtis was really trying to play it up to the crowd. Just following him. Not cutting him off. Following him. That's another thing, Chris Curtis. If you were cutting him off more, because when you cut him off, you did have some success. But if you would have cut him off more, rather than just following him into the shots he was doing for you, you probably would have had more success. But he was pointing at him and yelling at him, right here, let's go, right here. And Hermansis is like, it's the third round. I've already won this fight. Why would I give you a chance? I mean, and Curtis's corner was giving him the right advice. Just um, Curtis was, he was executing it, but not enough. At the very end, he like flipped off Jack right at the very end and Jack yelled something back at him and it was a little bit of a commotion. You know, it wasn't a big deal. Jack was just like, he's yelling at me, the emotions, I'm trying to win, not to have a bro. You know, Jack Hermanson sounds like the uh, the chef. Um, Her Hermanson won that by unanimous decision. And I mean, it wasn't, it was very apparent. And then he apologized in his post-fight speech. I don't know why any fighter would apologize for being so much more skilled than their opponent at range, distancing, and striking that their opponent can do nothing more than complain and frustration. Like, don't apologize for that. You're not the bad guy because that guy can't crack your cold, right? Like, you ever seen Floyd Mayweather apologize for winning? Sorry, guys. My defense is too good. I hate that shit. Don't apologize, Jack. He did the right fucking thing. It's not the winner's fault that the loser is unable to create any type of action. But I don't know, that shit just grinds my gears. Like the best fighters we have are the ones that turn aggressive strikers into statues. And instead of appreciating the skill it takes to turn Joel Romero and, and, and what's his name? The fucking, the big giant Brazilian dude. The one that looks like a fucking He-Man action figure. The guy that looks like Ricky Martin. Paulo Costa. Paulo. Last fight, we had Curtis Blades versus Tom Aspinall. Fight started, Blades came out, leg kick, both legs. Aspinall returned with two right leg kicks. When he stepped back, a screw or something popped out of his knee. It's like, boink. Aspinall hit the ground. Blades is like, what? I ain't even touch it yet. 
fight's over. The doctors said they believe it was an MCL. Second main event in a row stopped due to injury. What's funny is after the fight, when this being went in to interview Curtis Blaze, like he really was like, man, this guy came all the way out here and it's not his fault. So let's not blame Curtis. Give it up for crowd. I don't know why I have a phone sign here at the microphone, but uh, <laughs> okay, just called the UK crowd individually, each each person. No, he he really kind of led the crowd to like not boo Curtis for something that happened that wasn't his fight or wasn't his fault during the fight. And I mean, the crowd pretty much did. They they were pretty respectful for him, and it wasn't his fault. You know what I mean? And Curtis was actually all respect for Tom. I hope they reschedule this fight. I want to see it. I think it's a good fight. All right, I think that's it. Thanks for listening. If you're still here, I love you. Like, subscribe, follow all that good shit. If you're still here, I'm surprised anyway. But if you are and you have not liked, subscribed to something, like what, what are we doing here? Come on, let's get it.